right, so I, I got this uh, once saved always saved um, saved in my bookmark and it's going in order from newest and we scroll down and we see you know constantly people attacking the gospel of Jesus Christ so uh, I see this gentleman here I think I was picking on him the other day so let's listen a little bit what he has to say second now I, I've never heard of this guy so let's take a, a gander at something Brian T that's the guy okay so let's just do this here Is this English? So I, I can't understand a single word this guy says. Is this music? I mean, come on, man. Here, let me show you what music sounds like. After time, okay, so that's music, man. This stuff here, I don't know what it is. If you like it, okay, whatever. I don't care. I mean, come on, but whatever. No question about it. But this love here that we're about to do is a greater love than just saying, "Hey, man, he's talking workspace. The music's bumping. Man, the beats are so good. The production's so good. Just don't even worry about this right here." Don't even worry about eternal security. Just, just let it breeze over. We can't do that. This is orthodox biblical Christianity. Eternal security. You cannot be plucked out of the Father's hands. All of the scriptures that they have, where you read them, and it seems like when you read them, man, you can lose your salvation. You don't have the proper context. To know what that scripture is really telling you and who. Yeah, so let's just take a, a random example here. Let's see if I could find something here. If thou, let's see, thou be perfect. Let's take a look at something Jesus says here. Oh, 
right there. There we go. That's a good one. This is a good, good example right here. Matthew 19, verse 21. Jesus said, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Of course, the young man said, ah, never mind, and walked away. Okay, so in this verse here, uh, the way I understand it, okay, is that Jesus sets a standard. He sets the standard, a perfect standard, that we ought to live by. Yet no man can live by. Right? Nobody can be perfect. All right. Once you understand that nobody can be perfect, in particular, especially you, you cannot be perfect. Because you cannot be perfect, you need a savior so like in Matthew 5 you have heard that it was said of them of old time thou shalt not kill and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment right so that's the law of Moses now what's Jesus do he sets the standard even higher he says but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. So it's not just going out and actually killing somebody. It's what is in your heart that is just as wicked. Alright, so you think about going out and stabbing people. That's a sin. Well... The thoughts of your heart can also be a sin. See, Jesus sets the standard even higher than the law. Right? And so, no man can even keep the law. Once you understand, you cannot, you're not, you cannot keep the law. You can't do it. And then Jesus comes along and he sets the standard even higher. You got no chance. The only chance that you got is by putting your faith in him that is perfect. Him that had no sin. And that is Jesus Christ. Right, there we go. Should be there somewhere, shouldn't it? For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. All right, does that make sense? It should, right? It's not because we, we're not righteous, but he is righteous. And if we have faith in him, we are made righteous through him him right and I always like to point to Hebrews 11 verse 7 I think it is I don't know somewhere in the Bible it says Noah became the heir of righteousness which is by faith righteousness is not by keeping the law righteousness is by faith and no man is justified by the law. No man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident. The just shall live by faith. All right. That should be pretty clear. Who that scripture is talking to. You understand? Us as human beings, we want to think that we work for something. We're, we're created like that. Our sin nature. We work, we get. We work.
Uh, again, I gotta say, it, being saved, everlasting life has nothing to do with sin, or I should say, nothing to do with whether or not you sin. It's about faith. We get now. Every other religion out there has the same philosophy. So how would our religion be any different? True biblical Christianity if we said you have to constantly work to make sure that you're saved when we know Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 says you are saved by grace through faith not through work so no man can boast and I have Brian's record I've been listening to it it's fire man the beats are fire the production's fire but as yeah hell is fire too Work out your salvation with trembling and fear. Branches connected to the tree will be cut off if they don't bear fruit. Now, if somebody reads this, and these are scriptures that are in the Bible, even though you didn't leave that, you're going to think you can lose your salvation. Yeah, to bear fruit is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's to have faith in Him. If you don't have faith in Him... And you're not preaching eternal security you're bearing no fruits you're no good and uh, you, to sit um, to think of this to be cut off uh, I've heard people imply that while well, you were connected and then you were cut off and that's not it if you're trying to say that in the sense that you were saved and then you were cut off that's ridiculous that's not true at all that's not what Jesus is talking about in John chapter oh what is that verse what is that chapter what chapter is that let's see if I can find it oh, I was thinking I was 15 for some reason I don't even know. I don't know. Yeah, John 15. Every branch that in me, every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So your faith might bring forth more believers, more people with faith. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. It's about faith. The whole branch, fruit, bearing fruit, bringing forth more fruit, it's all about faith. All right, it's not about sinning. If you sin, you're going to be cut off and thrown in the ground and thrown in the fire. No. No, it's always about faith. It's always, it's always been about faith. Salvation. Because you're not being discipled. You're not, you're not handling the text with care. You're just going in it and off your finite brain trying to, oh yeah, that means you can lose your salvation. That shows you... Isn't it interesting how you've got people on one side saying, once saved, always saved, you have eternal security. You have everlasting life. You can never die. You can never lose your salvation. There is great peace and hope in that. And we can be confident, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. On the, and then on the other side, you got people, well, you screw up buddy you're gonna lose your salvation you commit a sin if you do it on purpose you're gonna lose your salvation all the while posing themselves as though they never sin hey is that what this guy thinks he never sins this guy I guarantee ya is a big time sinner guarantee you young fella with long hair who's big into the boogie woogie stuff 
guaranteed is a big time sinner. Whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. Before they even had sex, he commits sin. You're telling me this guy doesn't commit sin? I don't believe you. I don't believe you at all. That shows me a man that's been 10 years or better in ministry that doesn't know a, a, a doctrine like eternal security. That's disheartening. That's scary. So he continues on. Your name will be blotted out in the book of life. In my heart, I truly believe many will forfeit their salvation. And yeah, and so these guys, pr pretending to be perfect, pretending to be God Almighty, are trying to condemn those that actually do put their trust and faith and hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's and uh, like this example of being uh, your name written out of the. Well, if you screw up, God's gonna erase your name. He's gonna cut you off. I mean, it's condemnation, right, all the way. It's you're gonna lose your salvation. You're gonna lose it. You're not. You can't keep it. There is no eternal security. It's everything the devil would say. It's the complete opposite of from those of us that preach everlasting life. Walk away willingly. Some struggle with sin, but some practice sin. And I believe when you practice <laughs> this sin, you are playing with fire. You can't live. Yeah, some people just struggle with sin. Other people are actually practicing sin. Well, it, sin has nothing at all to do with salvation. Nothing at all. It's about faith. Any way you want to, after being saved, you must be surrounded. You must be surrendered. I, I, I feel like I should clarify because Jesus didn't lay down his life in vain he laid down his life to cover sin all that we need to do is believe in him who has done it all KMF stands for holiness of Christ and always will now holiness is a good thing but there ain't nobody walking this green earth that's holy or you can make yourself holy in your own power the only way that you're made holy is through the works of what Jesus Christ did and his sacrifice. There's no work that you can do to gain that. Anyway, what really stuck out to me is how he comes in and talking about sin. Let me just go ahead and give some props again because I know the comments are going to come in. I love how Brian talks about sin. Uh, I bet he talks about sin. I bet he knows all about sin. I love but I think he's in extreme error right now, denying a core doctrine like eternal security. And it shows a lack of biblical knowledge on his part. And he says right here, he that he truly believes many will forfeit their salvation and walk away willingly. He puts some struggle with sin, which makes me think, so you don't struggle with sin? <laughs> Bingo. Yeah, some people struggle with sin, not me. I don't look at women and lust after them. I don't commit a single sin. I bull loney. Bull loney. Ah, that's after, there's another word I was thinking of, but I ain't going to say it. Sounded very similar. Okay, in John chapter 6, verse 39. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he has given me, I should lose nothing. But should raise it up again at the last day. Jesus is not going to lose one single soul. Once saved, always saved, is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Without it, it is impossible to have peace. We all struggle with sin, but he put some struggle with sin, but some practice sin. And yes, if you're practicing sin, there's no conviction. You're living. Well, what is that like? Grabbing a basketball and going out on the basketball court and practicing sin? I don't get it. Any way that you want, you can say that you're a Christian, but you are not. You are deceived. You are not a Christian. There hasn't been a new birth. The old man hasn't passed away, and the new man hasn't arose. 
it hasn't happened. It just hasn't happened to you. It's a deceiving work from the flesh. We're all going to struggle with sin. That's just what it is. That's part of sanctification. God is molding us. Testing us. I like to say this is the pregame to the... Yeah. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Is God testing us? Or is the devil tempting us? Or testing us? Right? So if you go... Like Matthew 4. I, I, To me, I just think... When I think of this... Um, you know, testing or tempting. The tempter is the devil. Right? I think actually Matthew 5 might be a better. Or Matthew 6. I think Matthew 6 might. For me, hey, correct me if I'm wrong on this. Is God testing us? I got a little bit of a narrow view sometimes. I, I don't want to be wrong at all. I want to be correct and but in Matthew 6, Jesus is telling us how to pray. And uh, I thought the word was manner. The word manner. After this manner. Here, here we go. How did I miss that? Okay. After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This phrase right here, lead us not into temptation. To me says, don't let us be tested but deliver us from them that do try to test us and it's I maybe I'm wrong I don't know I don't know I just don't I don't believe God is testing us at all I mean I mean as a overall you could theorize that hey this what do you want to believe in who do you want to serve do you want to serve the devil or do you want to serve God but once we are saved, you would have to really explain to me how we're being tested. We're being developed, but I don't think we're being tested. The game. But it's very disheartening when you get somebody with a platform like Brian T. I would say he's the top Christian dude now. Oh, I get it. God, guy I've never heard of is the top Christian dude. I would say Jesus Christ is the top Christian dude. Listen to this guy for some years. And props to your work, brother. Props to your work. Your ministry brother. work. Props to you with that. If you're, you're helping people, props to you with that. But you cannot effectively communicate the true gospel to somebody. No, right. You're not reaching anybody at all. You're not helping anybody at all if you're not preaching eternal security. Not a single soul. You cannot. You can't answer the hard questions. So my advice and my urge to you would be to stop speaking on things you have no idea about or you haven't seen both sides of the pen. And continue rapping. Continue doing your thing. Yeah, what well, I said. Forget about the wrapping. Start reading your Bible. But I'm going to close on this. In Matthew 7, Not everyone that saith unto me, the Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. To do the will of my Father is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's faith. It's always been faith. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not done... Many wonderful works. Have we not cast out devils? Have we not done this and that? Have we not? Have we? I've done this. I've done that. I've done great things in your name. That's not going to save you. Your works, your deeds, the things that you do are not good enough for God. The only thing that's good enough for God is what Jesus has done. 
And the question becomes, do you believe in him or are you believing in yourself? You know, think about this. And Jesus says, I never knew you. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. He, they were never saved. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. In equity. Am I saying that right? Sometimes I say it wrong. I'm telling you, I'm not very smart. So, ye that work in equity. These things that are mentioned here, prophesying in the name of Jesus, casting out devils in the name of Jesus, doing many wonderful works in the name of Jesus, these are not sins. These are not works of iniquity. The evilness of this is believing that by doing these things, you're a good person. And believing that you are going to be saved because you are doing those things. That's the evilness. That's the wickedness. It's not what you do. It's what was done for you that is uh, only good enough for God. The standard is so high you can't meet it. Only Jesus can meet it. He has met it. I thought, you know, I'd like to waste more time get into the book of Revelation. Um, only Jesus is worthy. Okay? He's the only one. So, um, anyways, that's good enough. I waste enough time. So, uh, my advice to this guy, read the Bible more. And my advice to this guy would be to stop listening to that crap or rap or whatever you call that stuff. I can't even call it music, man. Enough to time.